In this tutorial we're going to learn how to import PowerPoint slides into Articulate Storyline. Right now we're looking at our original PowerPoint slide. So we'll do a quick review of what we have here and then we'll compare it to Storyline when we import it. So when we look at this slide deck we notice we have four slides. And the first slide is actually set up kind of like a menu. You'll notice I have our R-Team, Services and Technology section. And then we actually have an R-Team, Services and Technology slides. And on these shapes here, if I hit Control K, I actually have hyperlinks to those respective slides. So this is kind of like a hyperlinked menu that goes to these three different slides. If you look down here at the Notes section, you'll notice that I have some notes. So we want to see what happens when I import those into PowerPoint. And then let's look at the Slide Master. So I go to View, Slide Master. And we come into Slide Master and you can see that I've got a custom Slide Master with three distinct layouts. So let's see what happens when I import that into Storyline. So we're going to open up a Storyline project. We just have a blank project. What we want to do is insert a slide. So let's go to Insert. We'll select New Slide. And you'll see that I have a few options. I can do templates, layouts, quiz questions, screen recordings. We're going to do Import and select the PowerPoint logo. And then just go ahead and locate the Venture Tech PowerPoint file in your Assets folder. So we're going to select that, hit Open. And what you should see are the four PowerPoint slides that you can insert into Storyline. And you have a choice. You can select them all, you can select none, and you can select individual slides. We're going to go ahead and select all. And as you look down here you can see you can insert a new scene or title the scene. We're just going to keep it default. So let's import. And the first thing you'll notice with the imported slides is that Story View actually drew out the flow and structure of the PowerPoint slides. If you remember, slide number one actually had three hyperlinks that went to the respective slides. So it was a simple branching interaction. And we can see that Story View actually shows us the way that branches. Let's go ahead and double click on the first slide. So if we look at the timeline, you'll notice that all the objects that you had on your slide or objects on the timeline. That means you can edit your text boxes. You have pictures. You have shapes. All those things are editable. In fact, this is no longer a PowerPoint slide. It's a Storyline slide that happens to have all these objects on it. So they're editable like any of the other objects that you would have in Storyline. And if we look at the Notes panel, you'll notice that the notes from PowerPoint are now in the Notes panel in Storyline. Let's go ahead and look at the Slide Master. So if we go to View, Slide Master. You should have two Slide Masters. So you should have the original Slide Master that came as a default when you opened up the project. And then now you have your imported Slide Master. And you can see we also have those custom layouts. Now let's look at what happened to those hyperlinks. You'll remember on the first slide we had hyperlinks that went to these three different slides. So those shapes here, like the R-Team shape, had a hyperlink to the R-Team slide. Instead of hyperlinks, now you have triggers. So that's a, the rectangle has a trigger that goes to slide 2.2. This rectangle has a trigger that goes to slide 2.3. So you can see that the hyperlinks were converted to triggers. Now when you import PowerPoint slides into Storyline, you may have to do a little bit of tweaking. And here's a good example of that. If I click on the blue slide, you'll notice I have three triggers. So I have my Player trigger. So I have my Next button and my Previous button. And those come from Storyline by default. But you'll also notice I have this slide trigger. And that slide trigger is Jump to Next Slide when the timeline ends. And that came from PowerPoint. The reason PowerPoint created that trigger is because it's linear and it expects that I'm going to auto advance from one slide to the next. So when I bring it into Storyline, it's going to bring in that trigger as well. So I need to get rid of that trigger because I don't want it to auto advance. I only want it to advance when the user clicks the Next button. So to get rid of those triggers, we're going to go to Story View. And I can just select all of my slides. I'm going to hit the Control key to select those. I'm going to come over to Slide Properties. And where it says Slide Advances, instead of Automatically, we're going to choose By User. So what happens is these slides will only advance if, I, if the user clicks the previous Next button or in this case clicks one of these triggered objects. So if we look at the blue slide, now we only have two triggers. We have the Next button and the Previous button. And we got rid of the trigger that came from PowerPoint. One other consideration when you import PowerPoint slides is kind of the interactive feel of the course. 
So for example, when we click on this first slide, these right here are buttons. So if we preview this scene, when we look at this slide, we see we have buttons. So when I click on this, it goes to its respective slide. But there's really no interactive feedback. So one of the advantages that Storyline has over PowerPoint is the interactive capabilities and the features. So what we can do is make these buttons a little bit more interactive. So I'll show you an easy way to do that. And then in a future tutorial, we'll actually go into interactivity in more depth. So let's close the preview. So if I select my Our Team button, I'm going to go to States. Any object that you put on the slide in Storyline can have multiple states. In this case, we just have a normal state. And we want to add a simple hover effect. So when I'm rolling the mouse over that button, it moves. So we're going to go ahead and choose Edit States. We're going to create a new state. Now hover is one of those pre-built states in Storyline. So if I just click the drop down, you can see I've got a number of pre-built states. We're just going to choose Hover. I'm going to hit Add. And now I can edit this so it looks a little different. So I'm going to make sure I double click on that so I'm in my active state. And I'm just going to change the color. Right now it's this blue. We're just going to make it a little bit darker. And you can see now we've got our normal state and we've got our hover state. I'm going to close this. Let's preview this slide now. And as you can see, now you have a simple interactive feedback. We'll cover interactivity in more detail in an upcoming tutorial. But for right now, this is a simple way to convert the PowerPoint buttons and make them a little bit more interactive. And now to summarize the tutorial, what we did is we took a PowerPoint file, we imported it, and we saw that the notes from PowerPoint came into the Notes panel in Storyline. We saw that hyperlinks were converted to triggers. We saw that the uh, slide masters in PowerPoint became slide masters in Storyline. And we saw that all the objects on the screen were objects on your timeline that are editable. And we'll cover interactivity in more detail in a future tutorial. But in this case, we learned how to convert a simple button into a hover button to add a little bit more interactive feedback. Go ahead and practice importing PowerPoint and, and working with your slides. And then in the next tutorial, we'll actually look at how to build interactive e-learning in Storyline.